Howdy folks, welcome to my Retro Media Room, and today I wanted to talk about my top 10 most valuable Nintendo 64 games. Starting at number 10, we have The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, which is my second favorite Zelda of all time. My personal favorite is Link to the Past on Super Nintendo. Uh, of course, many people differ in many different di entries of Zelda, because there's many amazing Zelda games, so no surprise there. And, and all the rest of these games, by the way, I'm going to recommend each and every one of them. Uh, like, there's there's no individual recommending and not recommending. These are all fantastic games. So, and we'll take a look here. Now, I'm very happy that I got a whole eye because I, I didn't, I, I had the game, threw away the box as usual when you were, when I was a kid, didn't know better. So I got a hold of this uh, very nice box later on, uh, later, later on, like years back in my adult life and collecting, I got a hold of the box. So I'm very grateful to have this because I love the design of the box. I love the 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 uh, gold background and uh, you know it's just it's just and how textured it is and everything. It's really great. Let me take a look here and uh, we'll also note note. Of course, you have the promotional material information booklet. You got the booklet. So to note here because this is a design that some boxes in 64 boxes had where the cardboard on the inside is pre-built and it stays in there i actually kind of like these it doesn't have as many moving parts this flap comes open and then the game just falls out right so even though yeah once they're ripped you know they're kind of it's somewhat ruined in the inside but i i kind of like that design because it just, as long as you take care of it it just it's just simple right now notice here because this is my original cartridge since then and you can see on the front here that the there's a little bit of fade fading in the gold background behind the title and everything. That's because of all of the handling and grip and grabbing it in and out of the console a lot. Because I played this a lot, so I love this game. So a bit of a word of caution that honestly, and and it's you don't always think about it, it's nobody's fault, but when you grab games cartridges out of consoles, and then this is something this is for me too, this is a note for myself. To try not to grab where you put your thumb or fingers on the artwork and the sticker, try to grab anywhere else you can, but still take it out properly. Because, you know, once the sticker fades, that's it. It's gone. So that's just a little tip there that for, for myself as well as, uh, you know, anybody else who is trying to keep their cartridges as nice as possible. Although I'm not going to be, to be honest, though, I'm, I'm not going to use this cartridge anymore because I have digital uh, alternatives to playing it in terms of experiencing the game so i don't need to use the cartridge anymore but if you were to so all right that's number 10 and now at number nine we have mario kart 64 so mario kart 64 is my personal favorite mario kart of all time uh i really love this game a lot it's one of my personal favorites of course very nostalgic one of the it was the second game i ever touched on the n64 in a walmart uh, on the de on the demo display they had there where you're looking up at the screen that's angled down towards you with the controller oh man that, yeah that that, that takes me back so this is the player's choice version of the box here which is apparently worth slightly more than a standard oddly enough uh, i thought it was the opposite for the longest time but at the moment it seems to be worth slightly more like i guess there are fewer of them so okay so when I got this, that wasn't the case, and that's why I got it. I got it for a relatively cheap price and very nice condition, because you know most people typically players' choice platinum hits, greatest hits, those tend to go for less than uh, standard versions, uh, especially with PlayStation games and stuff. But but lately I've noticed with Nintendo games that some of these players' choice, uh, these million sellers, players' choice, and so on, are actually going for slightly more. Than standard ones, so I thought that was inter I thought that was an interesting thing to note. And a quick look here at the game. We got the cartridge booklet, and I love these. On um, some of the some of the earlier titles, they had these uh, these slips that had additional gameplay information and control inf and controller information. Very cool. Always appreciate anything extra like that. Okay, and at number eight, we have Super Mario 64. Same thing, player's choice. And uh, su supposedly it's worth slightly more than a standard. But we're talking like 5 to $10 at most. Or, or even 4 to $8. Like, not very much. It's not very... It, they're all good to have. Don't get me wrong. But I just thought that... I just 
like I said before, I just noticed it. I thought that was interesting. It's a trend I've been noticing lately with the market for these things. Because boxes, like I've explained before, boxes are everything when it comes to these. Because there's there's a few cases where I have some games that are more rare uh, in 64 games that the game itself and, and with its booklet is more rare. But the box is what is what's making these individual titles I have listed here worth more than the ones that are, that, that are actually worth more as they are, but they're incomplete. So they're not worth as much as the ones with boxes. Right. So that's what that's, so that's going to be the same case here. And you have the game and the booklet. Yeah. Mario 64 absolute classic. Of course it, uh, pioneered 3d action adventure platforming for consoles. So and it's a couldn't ask for a better launch title. Fantastic game. Okay. And at number seven, we have Killer Instinct Gold. I absolutely love Killer Instinct. This game was so cool when I was a kid. The this graphics, the soundtrack, the sound of I mean every, everything about it was just so cool. Because I, I and I love the first one. The first one's still my favorite, but this game is absolutely great. We got the back here. Of course, you know, this, this being a uh, launch season title. So it's very nostalgic thinking back on the 64 back when it was new. Just throughout that holiday season of when it, from when it launched to uh, through that Christmas of all the games that came out. Booklet. And this has a really fantastic quick guide here for all the characters and their moves. So that's very cool. Very handy, actually, to have. Even if you're playing it on Rare Replay and getting back into it for fun, it's actually nice to have one of these on hand just for that. This Gargos, the boss character on the artwork there. So, yeah, very cool. All right. And number six, we have Star Fox 64. And with the Rumble Pack included, this is the special big box that originally came with it. Very cool. Uh, Star Fox is, of course, amazing. I This is a great game. I... I, my favorite, my personal favorite is the first one on Super Nintendo. That's my personal favorite, Star Fox. This one's a, this is a close second. Fantastic game. And we'll take a look at the inside here. So you got the game and the rumble pack. And, of course, I make sure and not keep any AAA batteries in it because uh, you don't want to do that because they can eventually start to leak acid and puff up and blow up and can ruin electronics. So you, you really want to try not to store batteries in electronics. You want to keep them separate separate if you can. And the booklet. So yeah, Star Fox. I love these games. I, if, I wish they would uh, make a new one. Kind of bring the series back a little bit. Okay, and at number five, we have F-Zero X. Now, this is one of the few that I haven't played much but uh, but i've seen it a lot i've heard about it a lot i and, you know so there's no question it's a really good game and there's it's got a pretty big fan following so you know that shouldn't be a surprise to many people and uh got the back here very fast game this is one these is this this game is actually a, quite the technical marvel on the 64 because it had a really good frame rate it was very quick it was very fast it looked good so it's a very cool game a very unique game on the 64 because f-zero just in general is a classic Nintendo franchise, so very cool games. And you got the game, and you got... I kind of like, honestly, I kind of like the the simplicity and, and uh, matching of the, the yellow book, the yellow booklets, the N64 background with the title. Uh, I mean, I, I, love, I love all sorts of different artwork, but I kind of liked... How they all matched a little bit in that regard. I, I didn't mind that theme that they had with these. So, all right, that's F Zero. And number four, we have StarCraft 64. Uh, a friend of mine is a huge fan of this. Uh, I helped him get, land his copy. And that while I was at it, I got a hold of my own. And because I know it's an iconic game and it's actually. It was expensive when we got it at the time, and it's only gone up since then. So it's yeah, it's pretty pricey. And uh, now I only have the cartridge and booklet. And I have this, of course. These these are official. 
Nintendo shell cases that you can get, which are very nice, a very nice alternative to, to not having the, whether it be the official boxes or say going to uh, gaming relics or game relics.com and getting a custom case, which I, which I love doing, but, but this is a good alternative you know, and it is, a, and it is officially licensed Nintendo shells. So it's very cool. Yeah. Very crispy booklet. And, and then the game. Very cool. I need to play this game. I haven't played this game, but if you're a StarCraft fan or you grow, this is the one you started with. I mean, like my buddy, this is what, this is what he cut his teeth on with StarCraft, and he really loves this game. And I know a lot of, and I know a lot of people do, especially when they were kids. And, uh, you know, it was kind of the way they discovered Star, StarCraft on consoles. Okay, and at number three, I have uh, Mario Party 3. And that was not intentional. <laughs> So uh, Mario Party is a fantastic franchise of Mario games or a line of Mario games. A lot of fun. Uh, to this day, I still prefer the first one, <laughs> you know. But I, but there's a lot of fun to be had throughout all of them. Really, uh, I played three a little bit. I can't. I want to say two was not as good as one, and three was an improvement over two. But that that's just off the top of my head. I haven't played it in a long time, so I I can't tell you. But Oh, and this has that style of box that we saw earlier with Zelda. And I'm actually pretty surprised at, the, at uh, Mario Party 3's current value. It's gone up. So I'm glad that I went ahead and and that and that's a future video where I, I'm, I'm, I could look at all my Mario Party games because I love Mario Party and I have all of the originals. So, um, yeah, we might have to take a look at that. And then, and then you have the game. So yeah, good thing I got a hold of this. And and certainly anybody who has Mario Party, keep a hold of them. So you can play them and, and they're going to be worth some money. All right. And at number two, at number two spot, we have Ogre Battle 64. This is right there with Tactics Ogre, Final Fantasy Tactics, and so on of the classic turn-based strategy games. So this is on my to play list of classic games for sure right now. So take a look here. Another one of these, uh, of course, showcases. Pretty hefty booklet here. And then the game, alternate artwork. I wish I had the box to this, but I'm just I'm just fortunate that I have the game at all because it's hard to get a hold of and it's only gone up. So yeah, very cool game, and uh, I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to uh, playing it. All right, at number one, we have. The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Earlier, uh, I was talking about Ocarina of Time being my second, Link to the Past. There's many people that this is their favorite. And I can, you know, I can I can understand why. So it's funny. Expansion pack required. And I had that ever and I had that ever since uh Perfect Dark and Torok 2. Uh, whichever came first, uh, but I had it for I had it for those, and they originally came out. So I got an expansion pack when it first came out, and always used it. So, but this game actually required in order to play because there's a lot going on in this game. I actually this is one of the ones I haven't gotten around to though. So, and I know it's a classic, and I fully intend to play it. I, I've got digital means of being able to fire it up and play it. So I will, or, or alternative means of playing it. Whether I, I think uh, I've got a version I can play. A GameCube version that I can play through my Wii or, you know, there's Switch. There's different ways, right? And take a look here. Now, this this is version of being the collector's edition. Of course, got the booklet. Very nice, crispy booklet. And now, that's the only guts I have with that I actually can give it some Nintendo, like, you know, legal information or all that. But here's the unique part. This is why I will never uh, play this cartridge right so this is the gold 3d labeled version of the car right being the collector's edition so from what i understand this gold cartridge material is susceptible to breaking and coming apart shattering and so on so for that reason alone i will never bother playing it this way i will only keep this as to cherish it and that's it uh, I will play it through all the other means I mentioned before. So I will experience it, but this cartridge is just to keep. And that was my top 10 most valuable 
Nintendo 64 games as of now. If you like what you saw here and you love the 64 and you want to see more of the 64, uh, leave a comment down below, subscribe, hit the like button, uh, hit the notification bell, keep up with my videos. And we'll take and we'll take a look at some more here in the very near future. And have a wonderful day. See you next time.